This is another episode of Talks with Tyler ISD, a podcast about the passionate people who have a heart for students. This podcast is brought to you by Texas Bank and Trust. Welcome to another episode of Talks with Tyler ISD. I'm your host, Jennifer Hines, and joining us today is our District Elementary Teacher of the Year, Hartley Bernardino. Thank you so much for joining us and congratulations. Oh, thank you. I mean, that's a huge honor to be the district, because not only for your campus, but, mm -hmm. but district-wide. Tell you. us what led you to become a teacher because I know it's a passion, it's a calling. So yes. how, you know, how old were you when you started thinking, you know, I kind of like this teacher idea. I remember I was in the first grade, I was six. Um, I decided I wanted to be a teacher. I loved the idea of it. I loved my teacher. Like I just was like, I really want to do that. And so it's pretty rare for people to decide what they want to do as a kid. You know, you ask, any of my students, they might give you an answer, but you know, does that really come to fruition? Road, yes. Are they, they might, is that yeah. still what they want to do? Exactly. And so it, it is kind of, it's shocking that I did stick with it, but it's a passion. Like I'm so, I, I love what I do. And so I remember I used to play teacher all the time when my teacher gave away like her anchor charts at the end of the year. I'm like, I want, I would bring all my textbooks home and use them. So and it's, your students were probably your stuffed animals yes. or your friends that you made play teacher. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and they got pretend grades. Like it was, it was oh, a whole it thing. it was a whole thing. Oh, <laughs> yes, I love it's it. It's been a passion. And so you from there have obviously decided to go the teaching route. Mm -hmm. um, where did you end up going to, to college and kind of talk us through that? I went to Baylor. Um, I remember as a senior, I went and toured in toured multiple colleges. And I remember Baylor was saying that their teachers all found jobs. So their graduating class, 100% of the teachers were employed. And you're so like, I, yeah, I need a job, so yes, I'm gonna I go there. I remember thinking, wow, like you, you must be doing something right. And I, I loved it. I love my experience at Baylor. Oh, that's great. Well, tell us, were there any teachers, you know, along the way, whether that was in, um, first grade through high school or even at Baylor that just really inspired you and, and uh, kind of, you know, maybe uh, pushed you along in this direction and, and that sort of thing? Yes, I, I mean, I have to say thank you to every teacher I've had. I mean, they, <laughs> they put in hard work and I, I don't ever remember a teacher that I didn't love, but um, my third grade teacher, Ms. Shaminki, she was my favorite. Um, in fact, at Baylor, we did a um, a writing competition about your favorite teacher and I won and she actually got to come to Waco oh. and she got to sit through the banquet and I got to read my essay to her and it was so cool. Oh wow. And at the time I don't think I understood like what it meant to her but as a mm -hmm. teacher now I'm like wow that, like that's, that's the what impact. You, yeah yes. because you do every day you make an impact in the classroom yes. and again that's that's one of the things that as a teacher you get out of it and that calling, it's its so neat to see that. Tell us a little bit um, about your classroom. Where are you at and, and what is what is a day like in your classroom? Yes, I teach fifth grade math at Bell Elementary and I, I know there's some people that are like, oh, math. Oh my gosh, yeah, I'm a word person. I am yes. not a math person, <laughs> but kudos to you is all I have to say. Yeah, I'm <laughs> such a math person, but I love it. Um, I love the independence of fifth grade. They are, they are very ready for middle school at this point in the year. And mm -hmm. so I love that we get to build them to that point of getting them independent from middle school. Um, I'm a creature of habit, so therefore my, te my classroom is very habitual. They know what they're supposed to do every day. They know their routines. Right now we're doing star reviews, so I've got to keep them on their toes. We play lots of games, lots of fun mm -hmm. <laughs> activities, so. Yeah, it's great to have that interaction. Um, yes. So you do, you bring creativity to the classroom yes, as well. Yes, I try to as much as I can. It's It can be challenging having a set of standards to teach, but I, I want them to remember their experience in my class. And you actually have kind of a quote that you live by when it comes to, comes to your kind of educational philosophy. Share that with us. Yes, yeah, so I remember in college, and I've seen the video multiple times, and every time I see it, I'm like, wow. Um, if you've seen the video by Rita Pearson, she says, Teach students don't learn from teachers they don't like. So you gotta be likable. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's that, that relationship building with your students. It can't just be presenting the materials. You have to know them 
on a deeper level. And so what, what do you do? Is there anything that you do specifically to make sure that you have that connection with them? Because again, it's not just teaching them mm -hmm. the material, it's, it's the relationship building. Yes, yes, I love to reinforce positively. So I have these things, I call them awesome alerts. And you know, it can stem from you did awesome on your test versus like, hey, I saw you like reach out and help another student who was struggling today. Or just like, hey, you came in and you got all of your work done today and I love that. And so I send them home and the parents sign them and they return them and they get to choose something out of my prize box. But my hope is that when they take it home, they get to have that little celebration with their family. So it's the it's the small victories. Yes. And it's letting the parents know yes. that that they are, you know, their kids doing well in class. So it's that parental engagement. Yes. Uh, speaking of parental engagement. <laughs> As parents, what can we do to support teachers? What is it that you would um, suggest to somebody that is listening to this right now that maybe as a parent, you haven't thought about that before? I think it's just supporting teachers and understanding what we do. Um, our job goes so much further than academics. Mm -hmm. And I try to express that to parents. Um, if there's a behavior concern, it's not necessarily um, about academics, but you know, our goal is to make them successful adults. Mm -hmm. And so that's the hard part of our job is, is relating to the parents. And I haven't met a single teacher that enjoys having difficult conversations with parents. That can be that's, a really hard part of the job. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but, but a much needed yes. part of the job, because again, it's, it's not just academics. You're really trying to help shape the whole child. It's yes. the soft skills and the academic skills. It's, it's, it's the whole thing, the leadership, mm -hmm. the responsibility. And um, it's because we care. Right. And sometimes I think that gets lost in translation, but our, our goal is to get them ready for adulthood, not mm -hmm. only middle school. <laughs> and so um, just being involved and in, in engaged, mm -hmm. important. Yes, yes, absolutely. And just knowing what's going on with your child's academics, behavior, just on the campus, what social events are happening. And I think it probably wouldn't hurt to every now and then just let that teacher know that you appreciate yes. them, especially <laughs> from the parents or, you know, even in encouraging your kid to, you know, just write a little note to their teacher or yes, send a little a video way. of them doing something that has to do with, you know, maybe a subject that they're learning in school, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. It's 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 always fun to hear from, I've got three kids in the district, um, you know, what they're all learning about and it's all yes. different things. And it's, it's as a parent, it's so cool to see their eyes light up when they're talking about what they've learned because you know that there was a teacher behind yes. that. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, so important. Um, tell us a little bit about um, being the district Teacher of the Year for, for elementary. You're now going on to the, the regional region seven. Mm -hmm. So you're starting that process now. Yes, yes. So what's all involved in that? Um, so it's, it's very similar to the process to go through District Teacher of the Year. It's, you know, stating your, your reason behind teaching, your philosophies behind teaching, um, the things that you do in your classroom. Um, so it's that, it's just, I'm still like mind blown from it, honestly. Yeah. You're still like, wait, what, me? How yes. did this happen? I yes. remember my husband was like, do you have anything prepared? And I was like, oh well, no, there's 17 yeah. elementary schools. <laughs> I was like, you know, there's, there's 17 amazing teachers out there. And right. so of course, you know, he's laughing at me from his seat as I'm up there like, like yeah, told you, I you told should you. Have <laughs> but that's yes. wonderful. Well, best of luck as you uh, compete you. at the regional level. And of course, if you compete at the regional level, then you go on to the state level yes. and, and so on and so forth. Thank you so much for all that yes. you do for the kids at your campus, but just the students that you're going to impact over your teaching career. Um, it's wonderful to see teachers be excited about their uh, mm -hmm. profession because that that enthusiasm is definitely carried over and you can yes. see it in the eyes of the children when they're talking about what they're learning. Is there, as we wrap up, anything that you would love to share with somebody that's listening to the podcast right now just about the teaching profession or, or your thoughts on teaching? Um, I love what I do. It is one of the hardest jobs, I personally believe, but it is one of the most rewarding jobs and I am I'm proud to represent the district and I'm like I said I'm so mind blown I'm so thankful mm -hmm. I have amazing administrators amazing family 
um, that supported me to get here. So, well, we are so excited to have you on our podcast. Yes, Congratulations again. Best of luck thank at the you. regional level. Hartley, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for joining us for this podcast edition. If you would like to find out more information about all things Tyler ISD, all you have to do is download the Tyler ISD app, or you can also get our district newsletter at get.tylerisd.news. We'd like to thank our sponsor, Texas Bank and Trust. Subscribe to Talks with Tyler ISD on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Spotify. Please share this episode with your friends and family. Introducing the brand new app for Tyler ISD. It's everything Tyler ISD in your pocket. This is the home screen. Tap the schools icon in the bottom right to select a specific school. Tap the three horizontal lines in the bottom left to see all the menu items. To turn on push notifications, tap settings and select push notifications. The events section shows a list of events throughout the school. You can use this button to add an event to your calendar or tap here to share the event with friends and family. The feed is where you'll find updates from administration about what's going on throughout the school, whether that's celebrating a student success or reminding you about an upcoming deadline. Search Tyler ISD Texas in the App Store or Play Store to explore the app for yourself. It's everything Tyler ISD in your pocket. On May 7, 2022, Tyler ISD voters approved a bond package that included the construction of the new Hubbard Middle School. Contracts were executed in June and construction commenced in July. Excavation and grading took place in August, followed by underground utilities and structural building foundations in September. Rammed aggregate piers were installed and a site retaining wall for the new courtyard was constructed. November began what we affectionately call the mud season, but construction crews were able to continue construction of the building foundations and start the vertical construction sequence with large cast in place concrete retaining walls and CMU block walls that will ultimately create the food service and cafeteria area. In December, we saw additional vertical construction with the commencement of structural steel framework creating the three-story academic wing. Structural steel continued in January followed by the placement of the concrete slabs on deck for the second and third stories. Interior and exterior metal stud framing began Roof decking was started and mechanical, electrical, and plumbing trades began. Exterior sheathing and roofing began in March. The next major area of construction will be the two gyms on top of the hill where you see the major concrete retaining wall. Because of your approval board, we were able to have a shovel ready project that could rapidly proceed. In closing, the Tyler ISD Facility Services team is proud to report the on-time and within-budget status of the Hubbard Middle School project. With the support of taxpayers' vote to continue building great facilities for Tyler ISD, the new Early College High School located next to the existing Career and Technology Center is well underway with construction. The City of Tyler approved Early College High School building permit on August 4th of 2022. The parking lot was scheduled first because it serves as the main laydown area for subcontractor parking and material storage. The first pour for the parking lot and job site was completed at the beginning of October, followed by mobilization of geo peers. While weather conditions during the month of November 2022 have brought some difficulty, construction has progressed forward. 
ICS Foundation was poured for the tornado shelter slab mid-November of 2022, and walls started going up December 2nd. From the start of the new year to end of February, SCI concentrated on continuing footing and foundation pours for the kitchen area, and recently finished pouring the last part of the foundation located on the southwest side of the building. The crane was mobilized to the site for installers to start erecting structural steel February 27th of 2023. Outside the construction of Early College High School, a practice turf field is planned for use of physical education class usage. In the future, you can expect to see the CMU block in the kitchen and ICF to be completed in April, as well as the structural steel to be completed by May of 2023. With the proposed schedule and adjustments made due to permit approval and weather conditions, the project is still scheduled to finish on time and is within budget. This concludes the report for Early College High School. Thank you again to our taxpayers for your ongoing support of the approved 2022 bond package projects for Tyler ISD.